What's up guys? Tim also with Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to the channel. I love saying that. So here's the scoop. It's been a while since I made a video and although the ones you're seeing I have made, they're not AI. Someone said that when I made the announcement about being hacked, but there's some that I had made for Facebook because I'm, I'm ahead of the game with this 354 Cleveland. As you'll see tonight, you've already seen now that I've, I've already torn this down. So I wanted to make this video on this particular engine here, the 409 Cleveland, because there's two different engines and some guys are getting this confused. 409 Cleveland with a single four, 769 horsepower, best of 928 at 141. It's been 143. This is the 354 Cleveland over here with a gold valve cover. That's the one that Brett Likens built in 2017. That's the one that I'm having some issues with with number six. So with that said, what I want to talk about in this video is the A3 cylinder heads that are on this. And I'll bring the camera down and show you this engine. And then I'm gonna show you the differences between the Cleveland four barrel iron head and the A3s. Because really, they're real similar other than material. In the fact that the A3 came from the pro stock head of the 70s, the high ported Cleveland head. And we'll compare those and get an idea so you can kind of maybe get things straightened around in your own mind. Let's look at this. All right, guys, this is the 409 cubic inch Ford 351 Cleveland. Now, this has aluminum heads. They're the A3 heads that I've talked about just a second ago. So I'll kind of show you what they look like. You can see the ports are round, obviously, for the exhaust. That's what Glidden liked, actually. You can get a good view of that because these are what make these heads work. So you've seen the engine before. That's the intake, that's a Ford Motorsport intake that Darren did. And you can see, I'll, I'll just show you some of the little tricks. If you look down here, you can tell that this doesn't look factory. And that's because Darren had cut all that out of there, reported everything and changed it, and then rewelded it together. So if you don't know it, you don't know it. But when you know it now, you can see it, that it's all those ports have been changed. So it's, that's had a lot of work to it. And then this is the 354 cubic inch Cleveland that Brett Likens made. And I say made because he constructed, it's not just something he assembled, with six 400 rods and the super lightweight crankshaft. It was matched pretty well. So that's another reason it makes good horsepower. You can see the bushed lifter bores in there. So now let's go back to the workbench. So there's three cylinder heads. This is the one off the 354 cubic inch Cleveland that Brett Likens had done. It's a stock four barrel head, nothing done to it, although someone said it had work done to it, but it didn't. You can see in those ports, look at, they're rough. They never had any kind of port work done to it. Next to that is a brand new A3 head, okay? And then this is actually a pro stock head, but it's a Boss 302. It doesn't matter. They just have the areas where the water would come through brazed up but it's actually the same casting size ports and all that kind of thing. You can see this has the fin in it, which is supposed to add like 15 foot pounds of torque. Now, when you look at these two, and this is really what we're comparing at this point, is the ports. Look how big that Cleveland is. And they say, yeah, it doesn't have any low end. It's got low end when you do it the right way, with the right cam put in at the right center line, gear and converter or stick. So it does work well. Now, with that said, will it pick up more horsepower? Sure it can. You fill up this port a three-eighths of an inch or so, you can pick up 30 foot-pounds of torque. Now, they make these little inserts here. They slide right in the port, and then you just epoxy them right in. Now it's considered what? Almost the same as this for height-wise. That's the difference between these two heads, the A3 and the stock Cleveland 4-barrel. Not the width of the port. It's the same distance from here to here. It's the distance from here to here, from the floor to the roof. This is much bigger. This is like 2.45, and this is like 2.0. I'm trying to do this with one hand, so forgive me if it's, it's going to be not perfect. And you know it's not like this. But there's 2.47. Look at the difference. This is 
roughly 2.08, and that's not accurate because I'm just doing this with my right hand trying to hold the camera. Now, here's where you're going to see the difference. Look right here. You see this, how it's right even with the deck? You see that? Right even with the deck, right? That shows you how much the port's raised right there. This distance between here and here. That's the difference between the Cleveland A3 head and the four barrel head, the raised ports. Now with that said, let's see what this measures. And again, this is not accurate when I'm doing it with a camera. 1.86, it was a little bit more than that, but the bottom line is it's trying to simulate this distance from here to here, right here, that two inches. That's where you're gonna pick up the, the torque because they say this area is dead and it probably is a little bit dead, you know, until you get the RPMs up there past 4,500. So you put this in here, you can pick up 30 foot pounds of torque. Now, we kind of talked about the ports. There's not much more to talk about them. You know, is there a little bit difference in port entrance? Probably. But overall, it's the same. So now we're going to talk about the meat and potatoes of the Cleveland cylinder head. And what it is, it's the exhaust ports, okay? That's the whole hindrance. And right here is the Cleveland iron four barrel head. And when you look at it, yeah, it looks pretty big. You know, oh yeah, look, you can put almost three fingers in there. But then you look here where the short turn is, and then you can kind of see that, yeah, it's not as big as you might think. It's because of the shock towers on the cars, which I hate those on a Ford. They had to smoosh everything back up to get it to fit with the exhaust manifolds. So there's a problem right there. Now, if you want to look at it in perspective, let's look at this. Here's a cutaway of the cylinder head right here. Okay. Bingo. So we're seeing that port. Yeah, it looks pretty big. There's the short turn right here coming up. But look how narrow it is from here to here. There's your issue. That's why they didn't flow very well. Now, with that said, what they did with the high port, Cleveland, this dotted line here, this was all cut out of here. Gone. Now what? Now you've got this whole area. It's, it can go anywhere it wants. No issues at all. So there's the what it looks like. You just got to be careful because you can't do a lot of grinding around this short turn because the water is so close to this. Same here. The water is close to this area by the valve guide. You can see it. That's maybe about an eighth of an inch. And then there's the valve there, which has some shrouding. You can see that. Look at that. So now <clears throat> what they did in the pro stock days, they said, hey, I don't know who thought of it. There's a million different stories. But they cut off that whole part of the, the head right there. And you can see what it looks like when it's gone. I'll just take that out of there. There it is. Now the cylinder head has no exhaust port, so to speak. Now look at that thing flow. Yeah. Now you're talking some horsepower, boys. And that's the floor of the port that we showed you right here. So they made these plates. Pro Stock guys did. Actually, I think it was someone in Ford that made them, actually. I know, I think Larry Puff is the first guy to run them out of car, Dr. Ron whose car's back there, told me that. And that was back in like 70 or 71. So with that port modification, Ford said, oh yeah, it could make maybe 25 or 30 horsepower. Darren told me that he says that it can make close to 100 horsepower with that modification with the right setup. Now you can see there, it's still a beautiful looking port like that. So what Ford did was they decided that, hey, this is the ultimate head. This is what won a lot of championships, right? The most outlawed engine, 351 Cleveland, baby. So they came up with A3 head. We already talked about the intake ports. Here's the star right here, the exhaust ports. You can already see the difference. What they did was they took this head and made it out of aluminum, but they made it even better than this. And here's why. When you look at this cylinder head, sorry about the camera moving around, but it's one of those spontaneous videos. Here's the, the floor of the port, we're going to just say. What's that at? One inch above the deck, right? So they did a high port. Basically, what's this? Two and an eighth to two and a, yeah, maybe two and a quarter if you wish about it. Now, the A3 head. 
two and a half. You know, is it perfectly two and a half? No, it's probably off a little bit. But my point is I'm getting generalities, so don't get into the technical stuff. But you see how far that's raised up? So what that does, it straightens the port even more. That's a pretty straight port, although it's hard to see in this picture because I can't go much. Well, I can move that cylinder on. So here's a better look of the high port Cleveland head without the plate on it. And you can see here, they actually brazed up or, or welded up this cast down in here. Some of it is in here. Some of the port roof is welded up in here. Now, that's what we're talking about. Straight shot right there. Now, when you add the plate, is it going to make it a little bit inhibited? Yeah, let's put it back on. There you go. The roof, though, right here, it's coming straight out of there. It could even do some more work in here. I can feel that. It looks like it could be even better than these are. But it's significantly better than the stock and factory stuff. So you take a look at this. Now, this has not been ported, so it's small comparatively. When you look at mine, you'll see a big difference. But look at that. Straight shot right there. You work this short turn a little bit here. You fix this roof a little bit. These things are going to flow serious. You know, I can, mine flow 260 something. That like eight or 900 lift. So that's, that's the issue right there. That's why these cylinder heads make so much power. And what else? They're 42 years old. So they're not anything modern, right? There's so many changes in the last 42 years, but they seem to work well. I like them and that's what I use. So you can see the combustion chambers are all the same. We know that that's not an efficient chamber now, right? The, the efficient chambers are like my secret A3 heads are the modern chamber that's swooped in here. And if I can put a picture in here, I will. You know what they look like. They don't look like this. So there's a lot of changes in the past 42 years. Now, here's a comparison here. These are my exhaust ports that have been ported by Darren. I mean, you can almost see the whole valve in there when you look. Hopefully it's not blurry. I've got my glasses on. And you can see here to the wall. You see where he ported right into the wall where the head stud comes through. Probably on all of them. Yep. Right there. So there's, there's a difference between that and the stock A3 head. All right, guys. Now you know the rest of the story. You know the difference between this engine and that engine back there. And you know a little bit more history and knowledge on the Cleveland 4 barrel iron head, right? The 4V and the aluminum A3, the first motorsport aluminum head. Which really what they did is they took the high port iron head, which Bob Glidden kicked booty in on pro stock, and they made it into aluminum only better, as you saw. Not only is that port raised to what, two and a half inches from one inch of the factory, it also weighs only 25 pounds compared to a stock four barrel head is like 53 or 54 pounds. So think about that. Right there, you put a set of aluminum heads on a car, you're already picking up 500 just from the weight, right? It's 100 pounds for the Cleveland heads, 50 for the aluminum, give or take a few pounds. So right there is a performance advantage. So Courtney on Facebook asked me, hey, Tim, do you have any more SVO stuff or history on SVOs? And I do, and that's gonna be coming up. You'll see them right back there. There's some prototypes back there. I'm not gonna tell you what they are yet. That'll be for another video. So stay tuned, because if you think that's good, there's way more than that. Like I always say at Trag Boss Garage, you're always seeing and learning something new. And I do my best to make that true for you.